All right, check this out. You can fix your low back pain in 30 days or less by doing these four simple at-home exercises every single day. Ready? Windmills, hip bridges, pelvic tilts, and cat cow. This was the formula I used time and time again when I was a trainer to get people's backs to loosen up and feel much better. It really does work, and most of you will notice a massive improvement. Okay, so we got to go through each one of those exercises yeah. and explain the value in, in regards to low back pain. Yes, thank you. You know, okay, by the way, this is literally... This literally, this these is like four, my go-to move right or now. a variation of each, okay? Because yeah, of course, when you're some other ones, too. when you're training somebody, there's much more individual attention. So sure, sure. So, but you know, generally speaking, almost everybody who suffered from like yes. chronic low back pain, and here's doing and here's how powerful it was, by the way, for any trainers or coaches watching this right now. When I would get a potential client who'd come in and talk about their back pain, I almost I felt so confident they were going to hire me by the end because I would do kind of this or some variation of this, and I knew I knew. Yeah. that they would feel substantial pain relief at the end of the 30-minute assessment that they'd want to hire me. Yeah. Now, it, it, obviously, in one assessment, I'm not fixing the pain, but then if we kept practicing this, it almost always took care of it. All right, so we'll start with the windmill. Now, windmill, really what we're looking to do is improve some strength, uh, some connection, mobility in the QL, right? The mm -hmm. QL, the quadratus lumborum muscle, which is on the side of the spine. And this muscle oftentimes gets tight or sore when there's instability. And it's it, this is common in people when they notice back pain when they squat or deadlift. Yeah. Oftentimes it's the QL and the windmill, because of the rotation and the bending, stretches and works that area. But because you're working through you know range of motion and it's not just a stretch, you're also connecting to it. Yeah. Um, and so it takes care of that area right there. It's that instability. Like when you get a shift in the weight, this is what happened to me when I got injured. It's... Um, it's the unaccounted for sort of lateral shift or like a rotation that, you know, is abrupt and, and your body just has to react to that. And a lot of times, you know, if you don't have any kind of training or like any familiarity there, your body might overreact or like might, you know, not be strong enough to sort of support that. And so then that's what leaves you exposed to getting hurt. This is really, really common, um, and mainly because the average client is middle-aged, deconditioned, you know, trying to lose body fat is like the typical, it's probably 80% of mm -hmm, our clients, mm -hmm. right? Uh, would be, would fit into that category. And what happens is most people age is you just don't do a lot of rotational type movements. And so you don't bolster that muscle anymore. You don't really connect to it like you used to. And it's really, just hanging on. Yeah. yeah. It's just doing this. Yeah. You don't side. really utilize it and strengthen it. And so then you go and you load, you get, you start working out and you're like, all right, I'm getting a little bit of rhythm. You start putting a little bit more weight on, getting stronger, stronger, but you're moving in the sagittal plane. You're just barbell squatting. You're doing these movements. They're just in the sagittal plane. And so you're really not challenging that. And then all it takes is a little bit of instability on that squat where the bar shifts a little bit. And then that QL lights up yep. and it's like, Oh, yeah. and it, and, and really that lighting up with that kind of load, it's like, it hasn't been trained. It hasn't been strengthened really to support any sort of instability on the way down like that. And so both, and I just, this became like a staple for me to uh, implement movements like this. I know you've talked to, I know you uh, advocate for like side bends also. Just because it's a very basic, easy Real easy. It, That's right. probably where I started too was side bends um, was just to get people started in this direction. Because if you if you keep them progressing on like a barbell back squat and you've got a client who's 40, 50, 60 years old and they've never they're not doing anything in their normal day that's rotational, it's almost inevitable this will eventually reveal yes. itself. By the way, the pain that comes from this QL kind of area, this quadratus lumborum area, you tend to feel it um, on the side of your low back mm -hmm. where the SI joint is. So hopefully there's a photo, there's a picture up here. Hopefully my editors put up a picture of what that, where that looks like. So the SI joint, the sacroiliac joint is on the, it's where the spine kind of meets the pelvis and it's on one side. There's two of them, right? And you'll, that's where you'll feel it. So you'd be like, oh, it's on the left kind of lower backside. And so this windmills helps a lot with that kind of back pain. Then you have the hip bridges. Now what hip bridges are doing is really we're just turning on your glutes. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of, a, a significant percentage of low back instability and pain and weakness comes from disengaged weak glutes, especially if you sit down a lot and your butt is just not, those glute muscles, it's one of the largest muscles in the body. Mm -hmm. It's actually a unique 
muscle uh, to humans in comparison to other primates in the sense that it's so keeps big. Keeps us upright. Yeah. Keeps us upright. Uh, and it, and the lumbar pelvic hip area is what they refer to when they talk about that low back area. And the glutes play such a huge role in stabilizing the low back. It's Anytime the biggest, back, strongest muscle in that it, area. Right. It's the biggest, strongest muscle to support that whole, that whole hip complex. And if it's weak and or you're disconnected to it, then that instability, that weakness goes to stressing yeah. the low back. Totally. The low back yeah, all ends the up, force in your lower back. Ends up taking low, which is, this is the next most common thing, right? So I get, because a lot of people have what we call, you call sleepy butt syndrome, where they're so con, quad dominant, anterior driven, right? And they don't ever engage. They don't ever hip hinge anymore. Yep. Then all of a sudden you try and teach them a good hip hinge and a squat or a deadlift. And they're, they're so disconnected from the glutes that all the stress goes into the low back. And again, and then totally. and the most frustrating part uh, as a trainer, especially being a young one that probably at this time couldn't communicate this really well, is that the clients think they have a bad back and they got to yeah. avoid right. these exercises because I've got a bad back. Oh, I, and then it, they only, it's only gets reconfirmed when they go to do a movement like this and they feel it all in their hurts. low back. Yeah. And so now it's, oh, deadlifts are bad for you. Oh, squats are bad for your back. And it's like, no, no, it's like you just, your QL is so weak. You're so disconnected from your ass. Like these are such support, important supporting muscles. When we do these movements, we need to address it. Yes. And I, I, it's funny. I wish people, instead of saying I have bad this, I have bad that, they could say something like, I have weakness. There's a weakness I need to work on. Yeah. I have a weak back. It's much more accurate. All right, next are the hip, excuse me, we did hip bridges. The next would be pelvic tilts. Now, pelvic tilts, you're on the floor, knees bent, and really what you're doing is you're taking your pelvis and you're moving from arching it to flattening it on the floor. So what we would say is trainers, anterior to posterior pelvic tilt. So you're just rocking the pelvis. And what you're doing there is you're turning on your core. So mm -hmm. all you're doing is you're really engaging and turning on the core because in order for you to take your pelvis and go from this kind of arched low back position while you're on the floor to flattening it on the floor, right? Like sometimes I would tell my clients, pretend like you're squashing a bug under your low back as you press it down. In order to do that, you have to activate the muscles of the core and the abs. And it in in that oftentimes for a lot of people gets the core to turn on, take some pressure off a muscle known as the psoas muscle. This is another muscle that oftentimes uh, is the the culprit when it comes to low back. This is a pain. This is a hip flexor that attach to the low back. If your core muscles are weak, uh, then your psoas inevitably is being overworked, and then you get inflammation there at the attachment of the spine, you get low back pain. So those pelvic tilts on the floor, by the way, by themselves, pelvic tilts oftentimes, I'd say probably six or seven out of 10 times, by themselves will take someone's low back pain from wherever it is to a lot lower, just from yeah. that alone. I mean, if we can't get that response, we can't get that like, a bracing effect and that ability to recruit those muscles there in your core. I mean, it's, it's leaving you susceptible. You're going to take a lot of that force and that stress like all over your back. And it's just, if you can't load anything in terms of like a backloaded squat, you can't load uh, significantly basically anywhere if you're not bracing effectively. So if that's something that's like a little bit of a disconnect there, th we should stay here. Like yes. This is almost one of the first things we need to reestablish. Well, part of the reason why somebody will all right away, um, you know, feel like they get uh, a little bit of relief in their low back just from doing these back presses is because most people have either a, a slight anterior pelvic tilt or an excessive yeah, anterior. Very mm -hmm. It's very, very common. And what that looks like is it's kind of like we're the, you're arching the, your, yeah, you're arching your low back, your butt Instagram moving. pose. Yeah. The Instagram <laughs> pose is like what we used to call the bikini model pose or whatever. And yeah. that's an exaggeration of it, but it gets you the visual of what we're yeah. talking about. Right. So the, the hips are tilted like that. And when they're tilted like that, that low back, all those low back muscles are overactive and tight. They're just tense mm -hmm. all the time. And so then of course you go and load it and it's already a tense area. And it's like, Oh, they just exacerbate that mm -hmm. where when you lay down and you tell somebody to do those back presses it opens it up and it relaxes it yes. for a second so it's like oh my god it's yeah. it's that, such that protective mechanism can kind of relax, relax. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of it's like the psoas is interesting when i learned about the psoas muscle and its contri contribution to back pain it was like a, it was mind-blowing i was in my 20s and i had a chiropractor that was also a trainer that worked for me and he talked about this muscle called the psoas which i knew what it was because my anatomy part my certifications but I didn't realize it contributed to back pain. I'm like, that's a hip flexor. And he goes, where do you think it attaches? Well, it attaches at the at the spine. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're if you're in that anterior pelvic tilt with your glutes here, yeah. it's shortened it and it's maintaining tightness, trying to keep you stable because your core isn't doing what it's supposed to. And then what happens is at the low back, at the low back attachment, 
is where you feel pain. In fact, if you look up psoas, P-S-O-A-S, pain, look it up. Look up the symptoms. It's all low back pain. It's all coming from uh, yep. the low and back. And then you add in that most of us, most Americans have pretty sedentary lifestyles where you're sitting down and this just makes- and the psoas is just short. It that. just yeah, makes all this worse. Yeah. yeah, hip flexors, psoas, everything gets short. Glutes are off. Yeah, glutes are shut off. off. You're yeah. all in the quads. Like you just, you completely just exacerbate all these problems that we're talking about and then you go sit at a yeah. desk all day, yeah. which makes it so important that you don't just do these 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 movements uh, when you're doing corrective work. You don't just do them once a week when you go to the gym. You know, like you can't just do. Is this something you want to do a lot because you're trying to combat also what you're doing all day long sitting down? And so when we're doing corrective type of movements, right now we're not trying to build a bunch of muscle. This here. is not a workout. Yeah, this is not a, a workout. This is something that it's like you should try and do this as much as you possibly can throughout the day because we're trying to create better patterns, movement patterns in your body. And you sitting at a desk all day long is only working against that. So even if you've got a great trainer who teaches you a few of these movements and you're like, oh man, every time I see him, I have a little bit of relief. But then you go back mm. and you sit eight hours all day and for six or five days out of the week and you're only seeing him one one day a week, it's like, man, it's still gives you maybe it's better and a little bit of relief, but it's really hard sometimes to progress and completely relieve and eliminate. Right. Now, last up is cat cow. So cat cow, you're just on your hands and knees and you go from arching your back to rounding your back, arching your back to rounding your back. Now, when you do this and you round your back, what you want to do is you want to pull your belly button up to your spine. You're trying to suck in your stomach. So this exercise, it's a mobility thing for the spine, but really also what it is, and more importantly is, you're trying to activate what's known as your TVA, your transverse abdominus. This is the muscle underneath your abs and obliques that when you suck in your stomach, that's the muscle that you're contracting. It's the, it's the body's natural weight belt. So cat cow helps turn that on because that stabilizes your spine. It squeezes around your spine and stabilizes it. It's not the abs, not the obliques. Those are important, but the muscle that brings everything together and stays in tight is the TVA. By the way, side effect of this is you might actually get a smaller waist mm -hmm. from strengthening this muscle. By the way, what we're talking about, Adam's saying, doing it daily, the prescription for my clients was do 10 minutes a day of this. 10 minutes. Do all these movements. Yeah. Spend you know three minutes on each one or two minutes on each one. It'll give you about a grand total of 10 minutes. Do it every single day in the morning and watch what happens. And like clockwork, and I, I mean, these are my numbers. These are my numbers based off of the clients that I worked with. Almost 100% of the time, they would notice significant improvements in their low back pain within weeks, within weeks. It was a vast majority. Now, the ones that required more attention, more correctional exercise was a small percentage. So most people watching this right now, unless you have some severe back injury or something else, most of you are going to notice an improvement just from practicing this 10 minutes a day. And I know how debilitating low back pain can be. It sucks. It's the most common type of pain. It, it's the number one reason why people don't do the best exercises. It's the number one reason why people take pain medications. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes a day, no medications needed, no anti-inflammatories, no nothing. And not only does the pain go away, but it doesn't come back so long as you practice these movements on a semi-regular basis. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off this guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I used to have this spiel that I would give my clients about the importance of the TVA, right? And and that it's the most important muscle inside your body beside your heart. Without your heart, you're dead. So obviously that's more important. But then the very next muscle, and the reason why that is, is like, I didn't know what I grab a pen and it'd be like, here's your spine. Here's your TVA that wraps around it. And most people are so disconnected, so weak here that their spine has the freedom to do this like all day long. Yeah. <sighs> and any sort of stress on it causes issues, causes chronic pain. What I'm trying to teach you to do and train you to do is to, is to build and strengthen this muscle so it does this like a vacuum and so that's completely st stable and solid and supported all the time and this is something that is so important that if we get good at this everything else like a foundation to the house everything else that we build on top of it you're only going to get that much more results on all the other things that you do totally all right speaking of workouts adam i gotta call you out you <laughs> did your workout yesterday i saw you getting filmed you're you're you're, you're documenting your journey I think people are going to be blown away by how effective muscle memory is and just, of course, how good you are at getting your body to change. 
But what the hell shoes were you wearing, dude? You were doing squats. <laughs> I oh, actually. Nike, what were those? Nike, okay, so Nike I actually, pumps? I actually address it in the in the video because I like. You're trying yeah. to do like like instability. Well, training? I'm not even no. <laughs> right. and, and, cool. And by know, the way, yeah. too, like obviously, you know, uh, we uh, advocate for like flat shoes. Like zero shoes is what I should. That's be. what I'm saying. You yeah, yeah. Put on, yeah. Zero shoes should be what I'm squatting in. But the, but what's going on right now is that I'm just I'm not even prepared. My workouts are so lame right now. I'm not even preparing for them. Right. And so in the video I, ta I, I call myself out I'm like listen I know because I know some in internet troll is going to be all over me for wearing these big old skate shoes or whatever the hell I'm squatting but it's like I'm not even I mean I loaded 135 was the yeah. max uh, I did and I but I called it out I called myself out I'm like listen I I know it, like this is not normal for me to be wearing shoes like this but it's like I was just wearing it I know I'm only doing two movements real quick I want to get in do it get the content done so yes bear with me like that that I would either be barefoot or bare foot shoes like zero shoes or chucks would you know, be what okay. I normally would squat. Can I in. tell you what I like the zero shoes a lot for? Mm -hmm. I love them for the for driving the sled. Love them because of the grip oh, yeah. and because Feel I can toes. engage my feet. Yeah. Yeah. I hate big cushiony, any kind of shoes when I'm driving a sled. I want to feel connected. I don't think floor. I've actually driven the sled since oh, we've been so working weird. with them. Oh yeah. And, and, and it's in, so I like, I don't want big, crazy supportive shoes. I need to feel the floor. And I, part of the reason why I like the sled, there's a lot of reasons, but I like the sled because it strengthens my feet. I can yeah. feel it strengthening my feet and that's really important. So, but I, I can't do it barefoot. You try and drive a sled barefoot, yeah, yeah. slide all over the place, yeah. and it's not gonna. So it gives me the grip, but it also makes me feel connected. There, it was like well, so dude, good. Anything lateral for me, like I have to have those kinds of shoes because, yeah. like, dude, to to be able to the create ground forces and then also stabilize and then not have like anything lateral with like regular shoes, you, you get like this weird restriction and and. Too like I the toe box like I can't spread my toes out to really like grip and anchor myself so it's like you know those two things like I, I'm always trying to at least go barefoot or some kind of minimus shoe yeah you know? no but, I like I like the way they feel for that and then lunges were good too any anytime when I had to bend my forefoot obviously deadlifts because they're flat so anything flat is great for deadlifts but anytime where I bend my forefoot um, there's an element of support that I want but then there's a, there's also the element of connection I have to feel connected. To what I'm doing. I'll have to, you know, I don't think I've actually driven the sled yet. I'm, it's actually on my list. It is now. It wasn't originally because it's not a, a, it's not a maps 15 exercise, but this is where our, I'm going to talk to the, the camera and share like how I modify things based off of what happens. I mean, this is like, I mean, this is what real personal training is like, right? Like no matter how great our programs are, here's an example of where, uh, if I, if, if, if I was the client, right to me, like where I would adjust on the fly because like an asshole, I overreached, like I knew I was probably going to do. And I even communicated in the videos I'm going, I'm like, yeah, I probably should be doing bodyweight squats, but mm -hmm. my ego wants to move some sort of way. And so, and I even thought I was doing a good job. I'm like, well, you know, I was going to do 15. I'm only going to do 10 see what happens. Not nah, still sore as fuck. Really? Like, oh, got worse? bro. <laughs> to the touch. Like just way too much. Oh, like, just, yeah. Yeah. Like I woke up this morning and I'm like, oh, I mean, literally, literally could have done just air squats. Air squats would have been fine. They really would have been fine. And I should should have done it and i know better now, it's, now here's the, you're going to progress so quickly uh yeah, but yeah. but this is the first workout back yeah and it's okay though and this is kind of like i i don't want to be I, I mean i mean i want to try and be as close to perfect but i also don't want to overthink this because i'm not we're not planning anything it's like i want the guy we're doing very raw mm -hmm. cut, there's no like edits to this or anything like that. it's just like just film me i think i know what i'm going to do today but as i go it might yeah. change and i'll just communicate why it's changed well here's an example like Obviously, why the overreaching is such a bad idea is because I I wanted to be able to come back and hit my legs twice, but I I'm still recovering from so much damage that now instead of doing another good leg movement like a deadlift or doing something else or front squat like I'd like to do or lunges, it's like I have so much damage now. Now I'll do something that's a little more recuperative. So like what like pushing the sled the really sled will be perfect. Pushing the sled really light is what'll probably get inserted now yeah. instead of me doing it. But perfect example of like this is like a little bit of what personal training is like. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. you you have you have this plan, you have this workout plan with your client, and you're like, okay, cool, so squats today. Yeah, but okay, we're gonna do deadlifts on Thursday. Client shows up Thursday, they're like, oh my God, I'm still sore from Monday's leg workout. And you're like, oh shit, okay, well, mm -hmm. I had planned to do front squats with you, but should I do that right now? You know what? Let's let's hop over to the sled, put something real light on, just take you, or let's do some body weight lunges and work on the stride. Like that's like people don't understand. Or a lot of people don't. I mean, I know some trainers get this, but 
you know, you would think, because I could go deadlift, I potentially could go yeah. do that, but I'm still so sore in my legs that I, my body is still trying well, to recover. To put it differently, it's a waste of a deadlift. Yes, exactly. It's not just that, oh, you should still deadlift. No, it's a waste of the deadlift. Yes. You're not even going to get the value of the deadlift because you're too sore. And it's going to delay the adaptation That's process. Right, yeah. My body will be so- There are more appropriate effective exercises considering the context. Yes. That's, that's another way to say this it. This is, right. you know, and it was cool because I got some feedback from Dylan because Dylan's shooting shooting this and he's editing it, which he was at first not going to do. And he's like, man, I really like this type of a project. Can I do it? I'm like, all right, you got all kinds of stuff on your plate, but whatever you want to do. And he's like, no, I've really enjoyed it because- it's like, uh, you know, we're kind of doing it like almost like a fly on the wall where I just, I clip the mic to me and I'm, I'm yeah. talking to myself, yeah. you know, he's all, so I worked out after videoing you, he goes, I was having the same self talk oh, to, yeah. Yeah, to myself <laughs> in the workout. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's good feedback. Cause I hope that's, that's what people get. That's funny. So I came in this morning uh, and I haven't worked out here since we put the equipment in here, but I worked out here this morning and then Josh is like, Hey, can I, can I film you, you know, while you're doing your, your, your workout? Cause Adam did his or whatever. I'm like, I mean, I don't. You can if you want to. So one of the questions he asked me, and I know what he I think he's trying to get shit talk. You know, oh, it's not gonna work. I don't care. But he's like, so what do you think of Adam? You know, doing his thing. Like, I think it's pretty cool, actually. To be honest with you, you know? <laughs> like, what do you want you to talk shit? Yeah, I know better. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk shit. Well, you, you need you more energy. Come in talking shit. That there's no calf machines anymore. Like. <laughs> Bro, like, like that was like what some grand master plan of mine this, to like listen, shrink your guys. This is what like happens pathetic. when you let Justin organ design the gym. There's no cap <laughs> yeah. It's like, we don't need that. Yeah. No, you don't need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need that, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm not into the ballet moves, man. Doug was advocating hard for it. He's like, hey, what about the calf machine for us, for us small calf surprised. guys? Justin's yeah, like, ah, that's a wasted hey, space. Seen, Doesn't see, match. It's you out. Should, you should have yeah. seen too. As I'm, as, I'm, uh, as I'm working out, I put music on. happens. And I haven't worked out in a long time here. And so the last time I worked out here, it's got to be, it's got to be uh, six, seven months ago. It's about a long time ago, seven, eight months ago. And the music that I used to work out to was, it was Sepultura. It was Rage. Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. Uh, it was Anthrax. It was angry metal. It was angry. My workouts are always angry. Yeah, the bad yeah, mood. The good stuff. While I'm working out. Yeah, like right. I'm, I'm yeah. fighting someone. Yeah. So, and I've, this is since I was 14 like years old. relaxing music for me. Yeah. <laughs> literally, literally. Probably the, the third or fourth workout when I was 14 in my backyard, I discovered, never had heard them before, Master of Puppets, Metallica, mm -hmm. and I was like, never, I'm always going to work out this way. This is yeah. how I train. It's how I did for, for 30 years. All of a sudden, and this just has to do with my, my, my transition to my faith and, you know, and, and becoming music, a Christian. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> Everybody was asking Can me. I just tell you guys? Everybody was asking me, what the fuck's going on in here? Can I just tell you? <laughs> listen. People don't know how weird this is. Can you guys please explain how weird this is? Okay. I got, I've been on several podcasts now where people ask me my, Oh, what's your spiritual journey? Like, tell me about what's happened or whatever. And then one of the questions always ask me is they'll say, well, what are some changes that you notice? And there's a lot of changes, but one of the strangest ones is that because it happened overnight and I didn't want, it's not something I wanted. I didn't care. I didn't think about music. What am I going to listen to? It was like my desires and wants changed just overnight and now i listen to worship music while i lift weights <laughs> <laughs> so i had it on in here while i'm squatting you know 3, 375 vicky was cutting my hair today. she's like i didn't even pick up on it she saw it yeah. it was i was so, it was so white noise to me i didn't notice and she heard it like click over to something else like that she goes oh no more gospel music huh and i'm like huh gospel <laughs> Yeah. yeah, she's yeah. like, you even notice we've been listening to worship music all. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, yeah. I didn't even notice. I said, Sal, it used to be so Sal's different. got to hold. Sal's got to hold the speaker. The PR day, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it used to be you so need a little help from uh, the man upstairs. It so. used to be so different. Yeah. You know, it's funny too. It changed my workouts. I used to be angry. I'm no longer angry when I work out. Now you're I'm, rejoicing. That's the yes, dude. I'm joyful. Sure. By the way, I still work out hard. I still have great yeah. workouts. Uh, just, they're better now, to be honest uh, with you. It's interesting. I, I tried to combo the both, you know? Like the they have the good message, but then oh the my metal. God. They have top Christian of that. metal. So I conflicting. Found, I found it the is. Christian metal. It is. <laughs> my parents were so confused uh, <laughs> growing up because they would always be like, what? And they'd get all mad, like, <laughs> listen to the lyrics. Like, I can't understand it. And then I just like would have to give them the little like yeah. pamphlet so they could what read it. What would they say? Like, well, well, I was, I guess yeah, it's okay. dude, there was literally one, like, it was like Psalm, I forget which Psalm it was, but it was like verbatim, like from the Bible, like, and they just made a metal song out of it. It was amazing. 
But uh, yeah, they wouldn't believe me. And I'm like, read it, you know? Because obviously they're like, you yeah. know, like <laughs> yeah. you know. It's so weird to yeah. me. It's a little bit of a growl in there. And like, you know. <laughs> it's so weird to yeah, me. Dude. I'm like, hey, like, what do you. I mean, I like I have to rebel somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. Like, I, I got like oh yeah, I got to. It's in my nature, oh you know. God, dude, so, so funny. Anyway, so right now the the my house is my house got sick, so my kids are oh. yeah they're really sick right now. So we have terrible sleep because kids are you know up and down and all that stuff. And it's funny you notice uh, as a, you know as a parent, right? You notice what your kids, who, which parent they go to, depending for on for what things, yeah. If my kids want comfort, if they're feeling bad and they want comfort, like my daughter woke up in the middle of the night crying and I went to get her and she was like, put me down. I want mom. Like she's screaming like, mom. And I was like, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, honey. She wants you. Yeah. And then immediately quiets down when she has mom. But then there's this other side that, you know, I'm now I'm seeing it in my almost four-year-old and I see it with my older kids too. When they get sick, they want comfort from mom, but then they want supplements from dad or medicine. Hmm. So my older kids now have done this for a long time. They'll call me from their mom's house because they yeah. stay with their mom half the yeah. time. Dad, what do I take? Papa, I got a sore throat. Can you send me some whatever? So now my four-year-old did that. So yesterday, he was all mad. He's like, I could see some of me now in him. I'm like, great, he's going to be like that. He's like, I'm so mad. And I'm like, why are you so mad? I'm getting a sore throat. I don't want to get angry. I'm not, I don't want to get sick. I'm not going to get sick. I'm like, oh, well, you know, you might get sick. <laughs> so then he goes, I want supplements. Give me some supplements. I'm like, all right, what do I give this kid? You know, like, <laughs> and a chewy multivitamin. Here you go. I want more. I'm like, uh. So I'm trying to find you know things to tell to give them that. that now I'm assuming you've been doing that since the beginning because you were probably the person who was putting together the 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 medicine. Always. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah. You've but tried. I mean, he's four. I mean, what am I going to give him when he has a cold? No, no, of course. But I mean, the, he's I have been, elderberry. He's been conditioned to know that dad gives me the the stuff that helps me or fixes yes, me. Right. That's yes, what he sees right yes, now. Yes, oh, yes. And then yesterday, uh, you know, my wife tells him drink a lot of water because it helps too is this kid was pounding water like crazy I'm like dude you gotta be careful what we say I know, you gotta be you know, they'll take it yeah dude the way. he'll go nuts yeah. you know, you know that the, I, I shared this with you guys um, that we noticed uh, about Max before and, and this we this happened this week right there's definitely like a direct correlation with the amount of play time and stuff that him and I get together and then how he acts with Katrina in the morning so uh, she was just telling me this last night and she's like oh man Max was so ornery yesterday or the day before yesterday. And, and I was like, oh, really? What? She was like, yeah, he was just, so he gets to, when, when Katrina's getting him ready for school in the morning, one of his treats that he gets is he gets to watch cartoons while he has his breakfast, while she's kind of, she's getting ready, doing things. And that's kind of his, his time to get to watch a little bit of cartoons while, while she's getting ready and stuff. And, uh, you know, the, the other morning she said that and it, th because this week has been kind of crazy for us, we've been working long hours. I haven't been getting home till late. That's kind of normally our play time. Mm -hmm. He gets, I get home early. I'm very lucky that I get to come home pretty early and get to play with my son a lot till bedtime. And he's been, for him, he's been neglected a little bit this week. Right. And so here, this is what he just gets, uh, honoring. And so she's like, tells him, okay, Max, it's time to go brush your teeth. And then she goes, you know, and he he just ignored me. And he go, and she goes, Max. And she said he looks over at her and then just looks right back. And she goes, Maximus, if I have to come over there and turn that off for you to go brush your teeth, you're not going to get it all week long. And so he looks over and looks right back. And, just, and Katrina's like, this is uh Oh, little... now you got to follow through. Oh, yeah. So she comes over. This is funny. That's funny you say that because this is the point she was making last night. So she comes over, turns it off. Get in there and go brush your teeth. And so he's, and he's like dragging his feet. My legs hurt. They're so tired. He does stuff like that. <laughs> she's like, oh my God. So, bullshit so, so she gets all done. But she's like, <laughs> but that, she's like, that little shit he remembers so well. She's like, the biggest concern I had was remembering to stick to what I yeah. said. So she's like, I made sure I made a point. She'll actually put a reminder in my phone to like, Max doesn't get cartoons in the morning for this. And so he was, he was, this is now yesterday. He's getting ready and uh, he's getting up to the, the counter to go have his breakfast. Mommy, can I have my cartoons? And she goes, no. Do you remember yesterday how you acted? And I said, you don't get cartoons all week long. And he goes, oh, yeah, I do remember. Can we talk about that? <laughs> yeah. She goes, sure. What do you want to talk about? You know, um, how about you take cartoons away from me after school instead of in the morning time? <laughs> and she's like, no, this is yeah. She's like, this is not a negotiation. <laughs> this is the rule right now. And he's like, so he was fine. And they laughed and they talked for the morning and stuff like that. But- 
Yeah, a couple of things. One, I noticed that if always, you know, it's if if he, and it's weird. It doesn't even have to be that much. It's like it's not like he's not seeing me. He's still seeing me. He's just not getting that two, three hours of yes. wrestling and yeah. playing with dad. And like the normal, he's getting just a little bit of time with dad that, you know, he feels that neglect. And then that you then we see it come. And she's the only one that gets I don't really see him act out to me because of that. He doesn't at all. But it's the next day always in the morning. So like mm -hmm. when we travel and stuff like that, she would notice these things because I don't see it. I'm always like, really? I swear to God, he listens to everything. And she's like, no, no, no. He can be ornery sometimes. Kids will teach you a lot, man. They'll teach you. My, my daughter, my she's almost two now. It, you know, she can annoy her older brother by, you know, she'll take his toy or she'll do something or whatever. Or he just won't want to be touched and she'll. So we taught her to say, sorry, sorry. So if he, and we told my son, we say, if she takes your toy or if she does whatever, tell us. Don't try to push her. Don't try to take it away from her. Tell us and we'll handle it. And we've been doing that and that helps. But then also we're like, okay, Dahlia, say, do you want to say you're sorry? So she's learned to say sorry now and it's like so powerful. So now she'll she'll hit him. He'll get so mad and she'll go, sorry. And she'll go to hug him and he'll like melt. Oh, okay, I'll hug you. And I'm like, oh, this is beautiful. I hope this lasts. Oh, you know? yeah. I hope it works. <laughs> I mean, it's so cool. Oh, yeah, nice I meant to tell you guys that. So you know that, uh, you know, school's back, right? So yeah. sc school started back up now. We're on, I don't know how many weeks now it's been. Um, but you guys know that we, we, we. it's so funny. I, I've been saying that we held Max back and like all the teachers yeah. have been DMing me and giving me shit like, really? you don't say held back. You started him, you, he started a different time or some shit. I forget what they even say. I have to say, it's like, I'm not, first of all, I don't say it around him. You know, it's yeah. like, and it's not a big deal. It's like, whatever. But some people are like, you don't want him to, to be conditioned to feel like he was held back sure. or whatever. So, okay, I get it. You know, so, so anyways, none of it gets communicated around him in the first place. Right. So I'll, I'll address that when he's 25 and he finally listens to this bullshit the way later. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, you can listen to this shit. To this hey, specific yeah. Episode, he'll be like 30. Like, yeah. He'll be like yeah. 30 by the time yeah. he gets around. Hey, like, he was a teenager and you know, you know like, we like, held you back once. Yeah, yeah, we're we're yeah, going to have yeah, so yeah, many yeah, conversations at some point. Yeah. You don't want to listen to your dad? Yeah. Yeah. But really cool because one of the things that I told Katrina, I was like, you know, I really hope, you know, all this extra time that we're we're putting into Kumon, all this uh, the the you know holding him back a year. What I want to hear this year is like, I really want to hear from these teachers, like, oh, you know, that he's progressing, and when I get all his yeah. scores on social stuff, like that, I, that I see all high high marks. And Katrina, yesterday, Katrina said the teacher stopped uh, stopped her and said, oh my god, I just want to let you guys know that. Max is like the leader of the class now. He's ahead of everybody on this. He also like, and one of the things that one of the main reasons why they were, they thought he should just wait another year was emotionally. Like if, if kids were mean or they were like that, like his default would just to be to cry. Mm -hmm. Like he wasn't at a place yet where he felt confident enough to articulate or do anything like that. Like that's been, remember I've told you guys, that's the, uh, the negative side of this positive kid, right? Of being such yeah. a good kid and so easy. And so he's almost too passive that if somebody, you know, does anything or it's hard, his default is, yeah. you know, to cry, right? So that was a concern is this. And they would just say like, you know, emotionally he's young still. He's really young for his class, He another year. So they're like, it's so great. Like he will communicate like he, he, she goes, I see him now. If a kid is doing something, he stops. And this is something Katrina and I have been working on for the last year and say, I don't like that. I don't like when you do that. And she's like, he's like, <laughs> she's like, he's very direct oh, now. Oh, and so I'm like, oh, that's what I want to, I'm so happy to hear that, that the, all that work of putting into teaching him that, because we do that now with him, even when he's like, him and I are doing something. And if I tell him no, or I take something away, and if he goes to cry, hey, hey you don't cry over that. Mm. If you don't like what daddy's doing, you tell me, I don't like that daddy. Or you tell me, that's not, you talk, you say it, don't just cry. Like you just cry like that. I don't know why you're crying. And it's not, you don't just default to that. Use your words, communicate with me on what, what you're feeling. Yeah. How on? you feel. Tell me what, what you don't like. Yeah. Cause if you don't like it, then I'll, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for you to, to be hurt your feelings like that, but you don't just cry. Tell me, tell mm -hmm. me you don't like it and then we'll fix it. And so we've been like communicating that for like the last year. So to see it being played out with it and then to not, we didn't have to ask like the teacher came up and be like, Oh my God, he's like telling people. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, Oh, that's really good. So I think it was the right move. I feel like that's, uh, and that was what I wanted to hear. We'll see if that's it continues awesome. to unfold mm -hmm. that way. Speaking of kids, are, Justin, aren't you like you're you're like by yourself now, right? Wife is going out of town, so yeah, you take, she's, you're going to drive the boys to school. You do the whole deal, like the whole thing. Yeah, like uh, she's doing a um, a trip with her girlfriends in like Colorado, and so I'm like, 
okay, yeah, they're, it's a whole new schedule. It's all because they're going to a new school. It's like 45 minutes from our house. This is why I looked at getting another spot because it was just like the, the, the whole like trip itself is like completely changed. And, and then on the way back, there's construction. So it's like an hour and 20 to get back. Bro, 45 to get there, yeah. an hour and 20 back when he drops his kids off. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like in for it. That's like two and a half hours gone, right? If yeah. You get count dropping them off and everything. Yeah. And you start adding up all those hours. Like if I was to, um, you know, draw this out for a couple of years that they're going to be going to the school, like all that time in between, it was just didn't make sense. And so. Yeah, so that's really what led us into looking at getting a, a new spot and kind of building, developing that for hopefully next year we can kind of move in. Uh, but yeah, dude, I'm like going to be batching it, you know, this week. I'm trying to figure it out and start planning it out because it's like. Do you cook when she's gone or do you just like chalk it up to the, like, what do you do when or she. Or do you door dash? Dude, I, <laughs> that's what you, know, does. you know what's tough I already know about he that? Does. <laughs> yeah, he's like, just she does so many things and I don't, you know, highlight that enough. Like, obviously I'm like terrible at like, you know, praising her, her all the time. But like I do as much as I can and I'm trying to like you know, get the boys to, to understand like how much stuff she does, like, you know, cooking things. Like she literally has a garden outside where she, you know, clips the tomatoes and then, and then she'll take like, you know, cucumbers and then fruit and like everything is like, she's grown and, and like brings it into like, I'm like, I can't compete with that. You know, <laughs> like, I'm just like, Hey, let's, let's grab like, pizza or like let's go grab so i and i get tired of that because it just like it, it destroys again, me yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like anytime she's gone like i'm like oh my god my stomach is gonna suffer the wrath you know <laughs> yeah. and so the one thing i can do is like barbecue at least and so i i'll do that like i'll i'll usually like uh i'll try and, and what's good too she'll she'll she's learned to kind of at least like um show me like options like oh here's this and here's all the meat and that i have aside where i would normally just defrost this and here's like sort of the uh the combo of like the spices and the marinating and so i'm going to be doing that and like at least you know marinate some meat and then like put it on the grill i can cover that in terms of like sides no like i don't know what i'm gonna do with that. oh you're different than me because i won't grill like i'm super i want to be in my zone like you don't like i can't have her not home when I grill. She has to be home when I grill because I'm not watching. Well, you, you're such a you and yeah. Doug are the grill masters. My I, I grill like this. Put the meat on. I'll come back and check <laughs> on it in a little bit and see if it's. I just stay there. I'm in a hole. Like my my yeah. music playlist has got to be right. Oh like God. I'm. Oh, wow. I got the right gear. I got my gloves. I mean, I'm like it's like a, it's it's a ritualistic. Yeah, it's a thing. Hey, for do you me. have an apron? You yeah, got I got everything. I got every. Yeah, bro. I got everything. You know what I'm saying? I got a utensil for everything that I might be doing. I do got my barbecue shoes. I got barbecue right. shoes and everything. No, those, are, those are my Birkenstocks. Barbecue right? shoes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, bro. So if it's me, yeah, this is my close. go-to is okay. Butcher Box Nuggets, dog. That's like oh yeah. Max loves those. That is an Fast, easy, easy. Yeah, throw uh, it in the oven. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm doing that. Yeah, I have the. That's like, the hack for hey, me. They're so good. Me and, and me never eat those anyway. Yes, Listen. and I like them. He loves them. So if I'm by myself. I, and, and it doesn't make me feel guilty. Like DoorDash, I feel guilty. I, I'll do that sometimes. But it's like, I sort of feel guilty about DoorDash too much. <laughs> so I'm like, at least at least with ButcherBox, I'm like, hey, I'm making a healthy, good choice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, they're easy. so good. We stopped our yeah. order of them for a while because we were eating them so much. So yeah, yeah, like, take them off. Yeah, take them off. Of course, a couple months later, like, put them back on. So I put them back on. I eat them. So you know the macros on those are? are I was going to ask you yeah, if you look. And I'm normally the macro guy, and I actually have a Six them. nuggets is 20 grams of protein. Six or no? Yes. No, 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 no. Yes, no, it no. is. No, 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 no. Six no. is 20. Yeah, that's correct. Six nuggets is 20 grams? 20 grams of protein. Hell oh, yeah. I'm usually, yeah. I'm usually doing I'm getting like 40 either. grams. I'm doing <laughs> yeah. like 40 grams of protein. So am I. <laughs> By the way, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, I would have actually guessed lower. <laughs> no. That's really good. Yeah. Wow. And they're gluten-free. So oh, I feel even way digest. less guilty. Oh, yeah, bro. Way less guilty I just about had that. some last night after dinner. <laughs> I had some of my like, yeah. you're having So now more? I'm like trying not to like eat them too quickly. That's going to be my move, you know? Like, <laughs> just like drag it out. Like not like every meal. Just yeah. crush all yeah. the bags. Yeah, because yeah, that's that's oh. that's anything that's like not too crazy. Like yeah. I'm into that. Oh, yeah. dude, yeah. Justin, I just thought just random. I, I just discovered something from our childhood that I never pieced together. So you were you were were you a He Man? Did you guys watch He Man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, did you watch He Man? He -Man. When you watching those now, it's, it's a very little very weird. little. Yeah, yeah, no. Watching it's, it now is interesting. It's very yeah. It's, when it's, he's not uh, He Man, when he's Adam, yeah, he's not He Man. He's a little. I think he's not. Yeah, I think he like. I don't know if he's. Oh, he's woohoo a little he's bit. Like, oh, yeah, I didn't I think know that. So and oh. then he turns into He Man, and something else happens. And it's but, like, uh, yeah. I was but it's like, whoa, this is weird. <laughs> like, <yeah>. Transformation. <laughs> 
and even his outfits, and his you know? outfit is even his so, outfits and everything. It's, it's so sadomasochist. Oh, I never noticed like, it. I never dude. noticed it as a kid. And I was like, wait a minute. Oh, like, I would, have, I would, have, to, I would yeah. have to watch it different now. Hey, actually, totally. Even, even if you watch it now, the female characters, right? The uh, God, what were the female characters? There was Sheila and Shira. No, Shira was a well, sister. Well, she's her own thing. One. Yeah. Oh, wait, it's his sister, not his wife. She lo- Shira was his sister. Oh, for some reason I, thought I think it was, it was the one with the big O. It was like a um, Orko. Orko, the the ghost. ghost. Yeah, yeah, the little ghost looking guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, there's the other female characters. There's the God, there's I the you guys remember there's the princess. I don't remember her name. She looks like a like an eagle almost. And there mm-hmm. was anyway. When you're watching that cartoon, this is a side note, and they fall. The women always fall the same way. They fall on their side, like with their butt out. Like, mm. like every, yeah, yeah. Watching that, I put it on with my son, and I watch him. And she fell. I'm like, I never picked up on any of this as a kid. Anyway, yeah. there's all this subtle stuff. Do you yeah. remember Man at Arms? Like his, like one of his number one dudes, Fisto? No, not Fisto. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a guy named wait Fisto. Minute, wait a minute. Dude. Really? This is getting more interesting. There is a guy named Fisto. Yes. That is fist weird. oh i've never seen a meme later that i was Doug, like look up he-man fisto he's like i fisted so <laughs> yeah <laughs> so hard He-Man. what yeah I there might have re- been something going on there i, I can't just, remember I so. you guys i can't remember all that that's so impressive. i was a huge bro he-man dude that's like uh, that's uh, why i developed body image yeah. issues it was because of he-man he was so jack dude, can i can i switch to, i know wait no almost oh, done. Yeah, okay, i'm almost there yeah, look okay. at fisto <laughs> He's got a big ass. I do fist. remember. I do remember this guy. Yeah, now. He's a badass. I do yeah. remember this. So guy. anyway, he so man at arms, uh, and Falcor. Do you guys remember Falcor from uh, the Never, Never Ending Story? Story? Yeah, same voice, same voice. It's actor. the same. It's the same guy. Oh, I yeah, bet a lot of people yeah, back yeah, yeah. in the '80s and '90s, like that, were used for yes. voices. Probably did, but a I hell never put it together. Someone yeah. did a post on Facebook, uh, and then I immediately I could hear Falcor and I could hear Man at Arms. Like, Holy shit, it's the same guy, dude! I bet that I happened a lot. That. I bet that happened yes. a lot yeah. back in the days. Because yeah, yeah. yeah, why? Why would you hire like twenty different people to do yeah, all these dude. cartoon type of character yeah, voices? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So transition. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to talk why? about this Let's earlier in the week, and uh, because I saw that Fist Justin time. had had it up also, and so we keep forgetting to get around to it. But I'm super fascinated, and I don't know. I don't think you've seen oh, it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Gatorade has come out with this sweat patch. You got to pull this up, Doug, sweat and see patch. this. Yeah, super fascinating. So it's reading real time the athletes' Your electrolytes. Electrolyte balance. No. Yes. Yes. And then based on wait, yeah, and yeah. it links to an Can you app. Buy this. Yes. Based Look. on your sweat and like some other, like, so it gathers, it, it's not like blood or anything. It's no, no, it's like, not blood. It's, yeah, like it's your just, sweat. Just yeah. sweat, yeah. Yeah, and it re, and it, so it reads your electrolyte levels, whether you need more or not. You know what I want to do Bro, with this? Bro, that is so brilliant. You know what I want to do with this? We should test, yeah. With Element T? Element. Of course. I would wear this patch, work out, watch my electrolyte levels change, drink yeah. Element T, it's see right how there, quickly the sweat, see this sweat patch? Can you pull it up so Sal can see this? I That's, thought this was super clever. I could totally get that. It's, yeah. it's, not, it's not even expensive. Look at that. Yeah, why don't you order some, some Doug so we can play with him? I think this would be really interesting. Put him on Justin while we podcast. Sometimes he sweats. <laughs> I mean, I, I do. My this back is, is really sweaty uh, right now. <laughs> look at this. Look at why? Right now, why? Look. Why? Are you, oh my why, god, dude? bro! Why? Jesus, I, you know I what, don't, dude? I, it's like a new hey, thing. Like it's this new, year, it's I swear, it's, it's like a new thing. I'm like, why it's my menopause. back so sweaty? Hey, we've been podcasting. He's going through menopause. Hey, we've been podcasting. Man, no pause. Are you still nervous? Is that what's going on? No, I'm not even nervous. That's like old news, dude. Yeah. Like, it's not even nervous. You got, hey, do you ever think about that? Right. So it's. Uh, I actually was just thinking about. It. It's funny you brought up being nervous and the like. Yeah. We've now reached the place of doing this where I I forget everything else. Like I. Oh, there, yeah. there used to be a time where you you like think, oh my god, cameras and this and that. Like no. I, it, it almost like it's all disappeared now. Yeah. No. yeah. Something there's something uh, so great about a, a career or a business or a job or anything that you've done to to reach that to reach to that point and it takes a really long time Mm -hmm. a real when you think about like when were you like just ultimate comfortable in who you were as a trainer 10 years yeah yeah Yeah, 10 years like 10 years like i mean really comfortable like no one's gonna ask i I loved it day one yeah i know exactly what you're talking about something i have something to to give you and like i can work on this just in the calm yes so there's there's a difference between i was passionate day one i was excited passionate um, but there was always this slight uneasiness of, oh man, I hope I have the answer. Oh, I yeah. hope I do a good job. And then you get to a level of when you've been doing it so long that you have this ultra Almost confidence. no more unknowns. Right. Yeah, you're kind of confident. And it's such a cool feeling when that kind of transition happens when you've been doing something really long. I don't know, man. I, I actually think we, we talk now a lot, right, with because of the, the coaching side of the business now with trainers, we're a lot more business talk, right? So, mm-hmm. which I've been really enjoying this. 
And, you know, there's always this common theme that I get when I'm talking to uh, early entrepreneurs, like this, uh, this idea, and I don't know if it's just this generation or because of social media and that this, this, this sense of like, um, everything happens so fast, right? And entitlement. I don't know. I don't know if that's what it's from, but there's this idea that like, you're just going to, it's all going to like come together for you, yeah, like no. within six months or like, Oh, I'm going to teach you these few things. And you're, it's like, dude, you have to put in so many hours of, of learning and trial and error and getting comfortable. And like, that's, and that is a big part of becoming really, really successful. You don't get to skip that. I really, yeah. at least in my experience of everybody that I know it's been uber successful, you, they all have to go through that now. Every everything you any job, yes, any job, anything that you do. No, and yeah. I, I, it's like talk to a There's plumber. No jumping over it. Yeah. Listen, talk to a plumber who just started. Talk to a plumber who's been there for fifteen years. Talk to a nurse, a doctor, uh, an accountant, anybody. That experience uh, is something you can't skip. You and, can't fast forward it. You can't just make it happen. And it's just this is being a, there. okay. This is a thing that I feel like this, and this really connects to what you were teasing me about the other day is that, and we all have this in common. It's one of the things, one of the traits I love about you guys is when we, we're into something or we want to be good at anything, we get obsessive about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that I, we all know is that, again, you're not going to be a master at it overnight. You're not going to get some hack, but the, and the hours and the time spent on it, you just got to do it. And so you be, so there's people that whatever job they're doing or thing that they're pursuing that the that the only hack is to accelerate that process. You got to go through the process. You got to yeah. put the hours yeah. in. You got to put the time in. You got to put the reps in. You can put concentrate it. Just you put know, more hours yeah. in. That's it. Put it all that, in. That's it. And 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 there's this this uh, unfortunately there's this idea that you're gonna be like oh buy this course or do this thing and then all of a sudden skip to the year seven of experience. It's like no, you got to put it in. And where where you're losing is that you're fucking around with your other time. You decide you're gonna work between nine to five and then from five to nine you're watching netflix and on weekends you're you're out with your buddies drinking and it's like w the ones that really do well or get to that ten thousand hour mastery or get to that place of real success they've hacked into like oh the work has got to get done yeah. and if i'm really passionate about this thing that i say i am then when i got free time and i'm not quote unquote working or getting paid i'm still working mm -hmm. i'm still learning i'm still working on my craft and lean into that because that is what's going to accelerate you to the success faster. So that's, but that was on my mind. And yeah. I was actually just when you're talking about that. I took my, I don't know if I talked about this podcast that I trained my daughter. Did I tell you guys this, did I talk about this on the show where I took my daughter, my 14 year old to the gym for the first time? I think you time. told us, but I don't know if you told oh, you took, No, you didn't mention that. Yeah. So I remember he was her, saying how he's like, she's more like me than I oh, realized. Oh yeah, 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 dude. So, uh -huh. all right, we'll talk about that for a second. So, and she doesn't listen to the show, so I can say this, but I, I took her, um, and she's been working out on and off and I've been very good about not imposing my, what I like and what I want to do because I don't want to push them in the opposite direction. I want my kids to come to me and, and witness through my, you know, my example and then come to me. And she has, she's four, she's 14. She'll be turning 15 in November and she's been coming to me. I, I, I want to work out. I think I want to train and whatever. And so I got her gym membership and she's been going with her mom. And then when she's with me, we worked on the garage here and there and I don't go approach her. I wait for her to approach me. And so she's been approaching me more and more. So I said, Hey, uh, do you want to go to the gym with me instead of working out in the garage on Thursday? She's like, sure. So I said, all right. I said, hey, we could choose. So I got a membership at the more country club type place. That's where her mom goes. I said, but I go to this, I go to the UFC gym. It's more of a, it's a little bit more of a hardcore gym. I said, it's your first time ever going to one. Do you want to go to one with me? She's like, sure. So I took her there. First of all, it was amazing because I could see elements of, of you know, like stuff that gets me excited coming out of my daughter. Like she's like, what's a pump? I want to feel a pump. And then, <laughs> How long does it take before I get jacked? And, you know, I, I want my arms to look a particular way. And I'm talking about her, like, delts. And this, well, your delts will do that or whatever. Or I think I could do more weight. And I'm like, no, actually, we'll stick to this. So it was a really nice experience. Of course, few people recognized me in there. So she got to see that, you know, type of deal. But I had this interesting experience where, first off, I'm bending, I, I'm bonding with my daughter, really enjoying this this time. But also, I haven't trained a client in a gym in a long time. Mm. I've gone to gyms to work out, mm -hmm. but I haven't trained a client in a gym in a long time. And so here I am with my daughter. I'm not there to work out. I'm there to take her through exercises. And you're talking about experience, right? It so quickly, so quickly switched into that feeling that I used to get yeah. where I ran a gym. Mm -hmm. And this is a gym I work out in every morning, but I don't have that feeling when I go in because I'm a, I'm a customer. 
Well, now I'm in there with my daughter and I'm just training her and it just switched. And all of a sudden I all got, I got all those familiar feelings you get from working and managing a gym. And so then I'm talking to my daughter about that. She's asking me, she's like, maybe one of my first jobs will be in a gym. And I'm just like, trying oh to hold God. back to you. <laughs> like, well, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> you do whatever you want. Oh. She's like, I think I could be sell a cool. lot. I'm like, oh, now God. I'm really not trying to cry. Oh, turn around. <laughs> This is great. So, oh my god, it, it was a good time. But I could feel that feeling, that old feeling that I used to get from managing them. So, so com it's such an automatic, comfortable thing. You know? Oh, that's so yeah, great. That's, that's so great. Yeah. Anyway, I want to say something before we get to the shout out. <clears throat> this, uh, I'm, this is the day before my grandmother's rosary and her funeral. She she passed away a couple weeks ago. A very important person to me, and I had this kind of revelation about her and and um, and, and it just in general this, this that that older generation. You were talking about a series, um, was it Masters of Error or something like yeah, that? You yeah, okay. And we had commented about like how crazy it was in those days and how people just, how did they persevere through world wars and depressions and just, it was, life was hard, objectively much harder. Mm -hmm. Yet today we have more depression, more anxiety, just more of these kind of like these, these mental kind of health issues. And I used to always think it was, we're just weaker. Maybe we just rise the occasion when we need to. Maybe just life is too easy, so we create problems. But thinking about my grandmother, it dawned on me. So my grandmother, four kids, very poor Sicilian. For I don't know how many years, she was on her own while my grandfather went across the world to try to find work, would send her money back. She came here on a boat with two kids. Literally, all she had to feed them with was a hunk of cheese, literally, on the boat. Um, she never got her driver's license. Uh, she was extremely devoted to her family. It, it was not an easy life, but my grand, my grandmother was always joyful. She never ever displayed resentment, uh, <clears throat> bitterness. She never asked for praise. She never complained, but it wasn't because of the culture. Like you're not supposed to complain. She literally was just joyful for serving others. And it was because of her faith. It was her faith that did that for her. That's why she was able to do all those things because she could have just done her duty, but she could have done it with resentment and bitterness. And you see this sometimes as people get older, one of them dies and the bitterness comes out, the resentment or whatever. Mm -hmm. She was never like that. Always joyful. Always uh, just a great example. Enjoyed serving yeah. her family. Enjoyed focusing on others. Enjoyed, like really found joy in it. And it was her faith. And then I thought back to the conversation we had about these previous generations. How the hell is it that they weren't all anxious and depressed when you know they were dying in wars and, and, and you know malnourished and it was tough and there was crazy poverty? And I think it was because people had more faith back then. I really do. Mm -hmm. I think that might be the, the secret. It's a component there. I think a lot of our mental illness and challenges is we life has gotten so much easier objectively, but we lost our sense of purpose and meaning, and so that causes this yeah, this spiritual turmoil. Elsewhere. That it, it, that shows itself through anxiety and depression in particular. So just a thought. So maybe instead of like a shout out today, we do like an exercise for all of us. I mean, that's what I feel compelled to do after hearing something like that is to reach out to somebody in my family or a friend or somebody who's advanced age, older, you know, and tell them you love them, first of all, which you probably haven't done in do a long it. time. And then two, probably talk to them. Talk to them about what it was like growing up and maybe get some perspective Wisdom. Um, yeah, yeah, and wisdom. So like if uh, you got it, everyone's got an older family member or friend that they have, reach out, tell them you love them, and then maybe uh, ask them, what was it like growing up, you know, 60 years ago? And then ask and, them what's important in life. That's right. right? That's right. Because they know. And gain some perspective for sure. Probably be a good, healthy exercise for all of us to do. Zbiotics is a probiotic drink with genetically modified bacteria. In other words, this bacteria exists nowhere else but in Zbiotics that you drink before you drink alcohol. This bacteria breaks down acetaldehyde. This is one of the negative byproducts of alcohol consumption. Breaks it down in your gut, so the next day you feel a lot better. So here's how it works. You drink your Zbiotics, then you go drink with your friends, enjoy yourself, and then watch how you feel the next day. Anyway, go check them out. Get yourself 15% off. Go to zbiotics.com. That's Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S.com forward slash mindpump24. Use the code MINDPUMP24, get 15% off for first-time purchases. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Aaron from Indiana. What's up, Aaron? What's going on, Aaron? What's happening? How you guys doing? Good, how are you, man? All right. Um, I'll get right into it. Um, I'm just curious on how you properly perform the balsava maneuver. 
Um, and is, is it different when using a belt? Yeah, it is. So, uh, what, so I, I, by the way, you wrote in with some of your PRs, you're a pretty strong person. So, you know, 455 squat, deadlift 500, uh, bench 305. You have some experience bracing. What, what, what part do you feel it may be off or where's the question specifically on, on bracing? Well, I just feel like after I get done either with my powerlifting program or just lifting heavy in general, my lower back kind of gets at me a little bit. And I presume it's because I'm not bracing hard enough or my core isn't strong enough. So it could well, be a number of be, things. It could be other things than that, bro. Yeah, it could be a number of things. But um, so you do wear a lever belt, it says here as well, when you do your big lifts. And that's when you're feeling your low back afterwards? Yeah. Okay. So when you brace with the belt, you breathe into the belt and then you brace down and you essentially hold your breath and let it out a little bit on the way up or hold it until you're at the very top. So you breathe in, breathe into the bra into the belt and tighten. Um, and you'll hear different variations of, of that kind of bracing, but that's essentially what you're doing. And I, I'm a, I, I would guess that you're probably doing pretty good with the lifts that you're doing. How long have you trained with a belt? Um... Quite a while, really, since I started lifting, I, I got in the bad habit of using it too early. So now I'm trying to work more on squatting or deadlifting without a belt. Um, has has the low back thing? Probably three years. Has the low back thing just presented itself recently, or has that been a, a, like a nagging issue always? Um, I think it's always been there, but it's gotten worse since I've started lifting heavier. Hmm. Wait, and give me more uh, details. How? Where? When do you feel it? Is it just with squats and deadlifts? Is it more with deadlifts? It's more with deadlifts than it is squat. Um, but squat when I'm going for depth, um, I don't feel it, it might as be hip, bad. Hip mobility stuff, like bro. Yeah, I would say you know we can always point to the core, but <clears throat> oftentimes it's coming from the hips and the ankles. And since you mentioned depth, that makes me think it may be more ankle or hip uh, related. Yeah, I think it's mobility stuff, bro. Do you wear uh, squat shoes or do you squat uh, with like chucks or flat shoes? I squat barefoot. Okay. So. <clears throat> okay. I don't know if that's a problem. Uh, it, not, it might not, be if you have mobility issues in your ankle. I mean, I'd love to see the squat. Like I'd love yeah. to have a video of you. Are you in the forum, Aaron? I'm not. Okay. I'll have Doug put you in the in the private forum. And then I'd like to see the, the squat because what could be happening too? If, if you, when you hit the depth, you could be have it just a little bit of play in the hips like that, and it'll just make the low back catch fire. That's what if, I mean. I, I went through this for a, a long time when I was squatting, and it, and it really exacerbated as I got into heavier lifts. Didn't really notice it when I was a little bit younger, lifting lightweight, but as I started to really load the bar pushing my deadlift and squat, I got to a point where, man, I'd have to do a couple sets. I'd lay down on the, on the floor on the, my low back was just on fire and it was all, it was all ankle and hip. And once I addressed the ankle and hip mobility, strengthened that, then it all went away. Yeah, so yeah. it might be that it might necessarily be you not able to now to Sal's point, getting a stronger core, training your core, getting better at bracing. That's only going to help and support, yep. but it sounds to me like it could be more of a mobility issue. Yeah, it's tough when you're talking when you're talking about someone who can lift quite a bit of weight. Uh, the 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 factors become a little different. Okay, but I can I can point to some general ones that may be the issue uh, that I've seen before. So I would try squat shoes when squatting, see if that makes a difference. If it does, I'm not telling you to wear squat shoes. I'm telling you that might be an obvious sign that it's ankle Jeez. mobility. The other thing is sometimes when people deadlift, in particular good squatters, so your squat is, is less than 50 pounds less than your deadlift. And so what tends to happen with people like that, and it's not always true, but tends to happen, is they overarch at the beginning of a, squ uh, of a deadlift. So they get into the deadlift position, they'll really arch their back and stick their chest out. And then that's what causes an issue. So what you want to do is you want to go, you know, what's known as an anterior pelvic tilt, posterior pelvic tilt, or in layman's terms, arch your back, round your back, go in the middle. That's where you brace and start the lift, mm -hmm. not the over arch position. If you start in that over arch position, oftentimes you'll feel in the low back. And I see that more with heavy, with, with squatters who are, you know, better squatters and deadlifters. Are you also sort of, um, going beltless up into a certain point where then you, 
you get to a certain weight where then you start to uh, work with the belt again. And, and I'm just wondering about that in terms of your bracing yeah. mechanism. Yeah. So, um, for squat, I would, I would usually go up to 405 or the, the 385 without a belt and try to get as far as I can up. And then like when I'm pushing towards a one or two rep max, that's when I kind of go with the belt. Okay. And that's going to gonna strengthen his core pretty well. Yeah. You're going yeah. to be able to brace pretty well if you're doing that, bro. I, I think this is a mobility. Yeah. Thing. I, I want to see I'm a video. Taking, of I'm both. taking a guess. Yeah, I think the mobility is really I'm taking a guess, but I feel like if I could see you squat, that we'll be able to tell. How, how often uh, do you do like specific unilateral training? Um, I'm assuming with your deadlift and squat, you probably do a lot of bilateral squatting and deadlifting quite frequent. Did you ever do any, any unilateral stuff, yeah, like not, single leg stuff? Not often. I actually am just switching programs this last week to where I'm trying to train more like a bodybuilder and do more unilateral stuff um, and just try to get some uh, unevenness have you balanced out. Have I'll you followed any maps? Um, I did performance. I have performance. Well, I like symmetry. Okay. Yes, yeah. well, symmetry. Let's get you on symmetry. Yeah. I think symmetry would be great because you know, you know, sometimes when we talk about training like a bodybuilder, what tends to happen is we just get more connected to individual muscles and getting the pump, which is bodybuilding training. But that's not necessarily what I would have someone like you do. There's an aspect of that, but really, it's about. I'd want to see you do single leg deadlifts. I'd like to see you do single leg exercises. I'd like you to see you do some rotation. And some lateral movement, uh, and that it's maybe maybe your QL needs some strengthening. Oh, yeah. um, uh, Do oftentimes, some yeah, yeah. So I like a program like Map Symmetry for someone like you, especially if you really consistently train with those big three. You're getting hooked up right now, so we're gonna set you in the forum, gonna give you symmetry, and then on top of that, if you shoot us a video inside there, I guarantee we'll get to the bottom of this. All right, thanks guys, I really appreciate it. You got it, man. Cool. Yeah. Keep going, bro. All right. Thanks. All right, I love man. everything you guys do. Help me out a lot. Thank you, you got it, brother. Right on. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it's mobility stuff. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. I mean, if you're that Sounds if you're like lifting it. that much, uh, and I don't know how much you weighed, but in his comment, uh, in his in his uh email, he said he was a scrawny kid growing up. So he's been, you know, he put on some serious strength and he's size. He's 195 to 200 yeah. pounds. Yeah. So yeah. And he's, I mean, he's squatting 455. That's uh that's exciting. No, he's strong. He's yeah. real. He's very strong. And if he's squatting beltless all the way up to 400 pounds, he, that's he, what I was trying to get at. Yeah. It's he, like, he's strong. Yeah. Like, he's, got he's got a strong, got a strong core. core. Yeah. He's like, I thought maybe it could have been back to the belt thing. If he's like the type of guy who gets in there, warms up with his belt, right walks away. around yeah. belt all day. Yeah, right. But man, if he's, if he's able to squat 400 pounds, Pounds raw, yeah. uh, I don't think he's got a weak core that's causing the low back. I think it's a mobility yeah. issue. And I, I mean, personally, this was me. This was, uh, I, I would deadlift and squat and my low back would be on fire. And it was because I had poor hip mobility, poor ankle mobility, and it would just stress the low back when I would yeah. do heavy loaded deep squats. You know, you brought something up, Sal, that I thought was pretty interesting because I <laughs> am a definitely a squatter yeah. and, you know, Deadlifts, that was like quite a different transition for me when I started really working on that. Noticed that it was quite a bit of an excessive arch yes. as I went to go pull. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was very subtle, but it was just like one of those things that added up over time. And I was kind of dealing with that. But yeah, to to find that neutral position yes. and really brace was yeah, squatters, significant. <clears throat> squatters tend to squat the bar up on a deadlift, or at least that's what's happening. And so they get this over arch, like lower the hips and I'm going to squat it up, which right. is kind of what a clean can look like like sometimes or, or a snatch yeah um but a deadlift is not like that you overarch and you pull uh especially if it's a lot of weight you'll start noticing some issues this is why the pvc pipe thing is one of my favorite things to use as a tool yeah. because it puts you in yeah. that perfect neutral position yeah. for squatting or deadlifting and so i think that everybody should at least do that one just to see if that's because yeah. you'll see that you'll have a that person that you're like the example mm -hmm. of somebody who's overarching they're going to have this gap on the th on the on the middle the middle point right it won't yeah. be touching yeah, their back row or, yeah or it'll be missing it. their low back their their low low back you won't touch any there because they have this gap so using and we've done videos on this i know we've done mm -hmm. it on the youtube channel we've we're due to do it actually on the trainer channel because we haven't taught that on the trainer channel and i think for trainers 
And for you, you could do it by yourself. A PVC pipe, you can hold mm -hmm. it yourself and, and squat and, and watch. But I would it. do that a lot with clients that have them arch, round, mm -hmm. go to neutral, and then that was typically. Yep. Yeah. Our next caller is Mike from Missouri. What's up, Mike? What's going on, Mike? What's happening? Hey, guys. Hey, thanks for taking my question. This is pretty exciting. You guys um, have been very influential for me between um, all the fitness advice and kids and spouses and everything else. It's pretty great. Cool to see you guys and chatting with you. Thank you. So thank you. Appreciate that, Mark. <laughs> yeah. But um, so my question revolves around um, maxing out and finding your max when you're doing lifts. So little background for me, I haven't lifted all my life. I kind of started about oh, a year and a half or so ago. Um, I didn't really play many sports or anything in high school. So never really had that background to kind of find your potential and um, I've done, I'm almost done now with my third round of anabolic. So I've got like this week and then I'm done with that. So that's, it's been pretty, pretty great. Um, but you know, the, the way that I've been measuring my improvement is just going up on lifts or on weight, going up on reps, those kinds of things. and just trying to prove over and over. I work out at home, so I don't really have a spotter or other people that I'm, um, working out with when I, when I am doing that. And I guess it would be fun to kind of learn what I'm capable of, but I also don't want to hurt myself and crush myself with barbells and things. So <laughs> that's where that comes from. I'm just, you know, interested in, in what's the, the process and, and finding what your maybe one rep max is, or if it's even um, uh, a good idea to try to seek that out or, you know, just kind of go from there is, is what I'm looking for. Good question. Yeah. And I have a lot of opinions and thoughts about this. You don't, you don't have to. Yeah. I'm going to start, I'm going to start with that, that I think that, um, I think finding your max is, is overrated. I think that it's, uh, you know, it's become popular. I think, uh, CrossFit made it really popular, uh, of like hitting maxes and people talking about that. Um, it, the risk versus reward, um, is, is just not there for most people. Now, granted, if you decided that, Hey, you know what? I want to try and do a, a power lift meet, yeah. uh, soon or at one point, it makes a little bit more sense for us to figure that out like that. then it's like, okay, yeah. but you can continue to get stronger and build and see great results and never touch a, a single max lift. Now that's first strong opinion that now, if you have the setup at home where you've got safety bars uh, or a, 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 a cage where you can actually set it to where even if you have to bail and go all the way down, you it'll catch on there and you're you're fine. I mean, I so I do. I, I train this way where I have a setup to where I can bail and I've practiced bailing the bar and I think there's some value to when you start lifting to practice how to get out from underneath a a barbell safely. But it's not necessary for sure. So it really kind of depends on on what you want. Like, do you really want that? Is that something that's that really important to you, or is this more like you're asking? It should it be important? Yeah, you, you, there are uh, there are one rep max calculators that you can use online that you can. You so can, not a fan of those. But there there's nothing going to be as accurate as actually testing your max out. But yeah. for squats and deadlifts, uh, you you want to have safeties. If you don't have safeties. I mean, I know how to get out from under a bar with squatting if I fail. Same thing with a bench, but that's a very technical uh, skill. Yeah, and it's I wouldn't recommend it to somebody unless they know how to dump a bar or roll a bar down their you chest and get out from under. <laughs> yeah, sure. so you don't have to. But if you really want to, do you have safeties at home? Do you have a cage with safeties? Yeah, we've got um, a Smith machine that's got some some safeties off the front of it. Um, and also just, it, it, I wouldn't use like the Smith portion of that. It, we just have a separate barbell with J hooks and things. So kind of like a half cage, Oh yeah. um, yeah, yeah. not a full cage, but it's there. Yeah, you can, mm -hmm. Well, there you go. You can, you can work yourself up and see what you're capable of, uh, if you want. But I, I mean, Adam's hundred percent doesn't really, doesn't really matter. The really, only benefit to knowing what you're capable of is sometimes we tend to, and it, it, this really has nothing to do with one rep maxes, by the way, this has more to do with just hard sets. Sometimes when we stop two reps short of failure, it's actually four or five reps mm -hmm. short of failure. So sometimes there's value, especially if you're experienced, to going to failure for certain lifts, especially like dead, like squats. Most people are like, oh, I only had two more, but they had like six more. Um, and sometimes going to failure uh, will let you see that. I'm, glad you, I'm glad you said that, Sal, because to me, that's probably the best argument, in my opinion, for 
somebody doing a max yeah. lift is because a lot, and, and I know I'm guilty of this, I, especially with squatting. There's something about sticking 400 plus pounds on your back that just feels like, oh, this is way more than I can do. And then you actually go, oh, wow, I got out of that. And you didn't mm -hmm. realize that you had what it took to get out of that. Um, and so the part of tr training to failure, training to where you have to bail does give you a better idea. That is probably the only thing. But if you feel like you can get to that point uh, without actually doing that, I, I don't think it has that much value. Yeah, I think I think mainly in a competitive setting, that would be my one argument for you know pushing yourself to that degree. Uh, and you brought up powerlifting. I think that would be a great program to, to get you uh, along that path to, to figure out how to uh, systematically introduce that and do it in a way that's like uh, appropriate. Uh, and so, you know, if that was sort of the case of like, I'm trying to, to, to ramp up and kind of get up to like 70 to 80% to like, you know, really start to kind of uh, pin it on, you know, week four, week six, you know, whenever, we, you know, in programming it, get to that point where we can now test out that, that, that max lift, you know, I think it does a lot too for stretching your capacity in, in terms of like understanding, like, um, you know, I have this capability and then I can kind of scale down the rest of my programming the rest of the year, uh, you know, based off of, I kind of know like where yeah. my, where my strength lies, uh, with that. But yeah, it, it's, totally not like you could go on the rest of your life with just lifting at like, you know, 70, you know, 60, 70%, you know, capacity and you're just fine. You're going to keep seeing improvement. So do you have max power left, Mike? No, we just have anabolic. Oh, well, we'll send that over to you. I do recommend though, if you've done anabolic three rounds, I was just going to say, yeah that you you probably should insert a performance, performance. or a symmetry round. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. just cause you're not a 16 year old kid anymore that can just bounce back Joint from, stability. Really, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you, you're, you're going to want to do that. I'll send you power lift, but my recommendation is that you, you do a performance or a symmetry also in there at some point you'd want to, you want to address that or otherwise your joints will start talking to you. Yeah. I kind of feel that in my elbows actually. Mm. Um, if I'm going too much, uh, just from bench and, Actually, I don't know what it is, but like right up in, in this part of my arm here, yeah. when I'm cur curling, like a hammer curl or something, oh, yeah. a lot of a lot right down on that one. I got to go lighter on the right arm. I'm not sure what that is, but <laughs> those, maybe I do need to slow it down then. <laughs> uh, brachioradialis yeah, inflammation. That gets me too. That's a common one. Uh, but yeah, a pro, a, like performance and, or, would probably help quite a bit and some wrist mobility. Mm -hmm. That's a common. What you're feeling is quite common. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to um, – Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead, Mike. Finish what you're going to say. I was just going to tell you what we're going to hook you up with, but go ahead. Well, um, my wife was the one that actually turned me on to you guys, and I asked – I was going to see if I could ask you just a question from her. She had Hashimoto's and was looking at functional medicine to do, like, blood testing and things like that, and I thought I heard you guys had mentioned um, some – one of your sponsors does something similar – the functional medicine was super expensive, so I don't know that we'll go that route. But if you have any recommendations that I could point her to, that'd be awesome too. On um, just having blood panels and things like that. Yeah, Doctor Stephen Steve Cabral, Cabral is who we work with. But functional medicine typically isn't covered by insurance; so you got to pay out of pocket. But I'll tell you what, uh, especially when it comes to autoimmune type issues, that's the direction you want to go yeah. for sure. I mean, you, you could find some covered by doctor, you know, insurance doctors that'll that'll do it. But I've had too many clients. Go to a doctor and they say, "Oh, your your TSH is fine, or whatever's fine," and they don't want to test antibodies and all that stuff. So, I think functional medicine is the way to go for sure. Yeah, and he has a lot of good tests, you know, that you can purchase. So, and she could go into it. We have a free Facebook forum called MP Holistic Health. It's free for her to go in there, and Doctor Cabral, his team is in there. So, MP Holistic Health on Facebook. So at least she can get in there, poke around. I guarantee there'll be lots of other people that suffer from that also in there, and so she might get some really good free advice in there. But I do think it's worth the investment to to do something yeah. like that. You know, at least to get to the bottom of it and and find out what she needs to do holistically to address it, than to just because it's not like you're going to have to keep paying and keep doing it forever. It's like getting that test, finding mm -hmm. out exactly what's going on, finding out diet recommendations, supplement recommendations that she should do to address it. it the, it'll be a worthwhile investment for you guys, and I, I do know that it can get pretty pricey. 
to do that. But if it's something that plagues her and really bothers her, it's a it's a worthwhile investment, at least doing it one time and going through it. At the bare minimum, though, get in that forum, take advantage of the free conversations that are happening in there, and she could ask some questions uh, to the members and some of the doctors that are in there, and they'll, they'll help her out. Awesome. Thank you. You got it, man. All right, Mike. Thanks, guys. Yep. Good talking with you. Yep. You got it, bro. I'll send you some stuff over. What are we sending a power lift? Yeah, send them power yeah. lift, but then Doug also uh, hook them up with a, a fifty off on the um, on performance too, and uh, and symmetry. So he has that option because he yeah. should he should uh, definitely do those within the, yeah, the cycle. I, I tell you what, when it comes to one rep max testing, uh, as a kid, I did that all the time because <laughs> everybody always asks, and you want to know. Yeah. As an adult, I never, 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 never. I mean, the last time I tested my max was eight, nine months ago with the deadlift. I didn't even do it with a squat or any kind of a press. And that was just because of a personal, you know, bet or goal that I had. So I have a, I have a, a, a opposite journey. Um, never tested my max until I hit 30 years old. Yeah. Mm. So I just, and again, of course, you know why, right? I came from the, you know, all I care about is what I look, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And so I went to that extreme of just like, watch, I will build the, the look I want and never have to lift like yeah. a, a power lifter was my, now, the how this came full circle for me was in my 30s finally lifting like singles doubles and triples for the first time never done under five reps in my life until 30 years old then did that and saw massive gains because i never i never had stretched myself that way or trained that way but then also went down the rabbit hole of chasing it a lot in my 30s yeah. and then the knees the hips the shoulder everything uh -huh. starting to feel it now i've come back the other way so i i do think uh there, there is value. I'm not shitting on value. The value, but, it's overrated. Of my, You're but right. it is overrated. Yeah. It's overrated. I did it. I as a, I there wasn't a single workout I did with another person probably until the age of twenty three where I didn't max out. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I it always I, turned into that. Yeah, I got to the point where I did all the main lifts, you know, yeah. and tested that out quite frequently. And then I went the other step, and I just tested out my max of Turkish getup, my max oh, everything. of everything, everything, everything you think of overhead pressing. Like, name so, an exercise. Yeah, I'll name tell you what it. my max was. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hey, real quick. Sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have a sale this month on some programs. We have a beginner program, Map Starter. It's fifty percent off. Then we have a bundle that's different. It's called the Starter Bundle that includes our most popular programs. That's also fifty percent off. So if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Brad from Texas. What's up, Brad? How can we help you? Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? How can we good, help you? Good, good. Uh, hey, first off, I just want to say thank you for uh, uh, your podcast. You guys hear that all the time. So I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but, but man, it's just such a wealth of knowledge uh, opposed to a lot of the things I've heard in the past. So uh, I've got a, I'm going to just read off my, my script that I sent in. Uh, to make sure that I cover everything here, but uh, a little bit of backstory. So in December of 2022, I was diagnosed with advanced stage uh, prostate cancer, which I'm happy to say I've, I've fought and won that. Uh, and at that time, I had just turned 50 years old. So welcome to the 50s, right? Uh, I was 330 pounds, had been uh, type 2 diabetic for probably 10 plus years, and just riddled with all kinds of poor labs. Uh, poor lab work, cholesterol, triglycerides, everything was out of whack. And, and I didn't pay much attention to it, uh, unfortunately. But in 2023, I began treatment. I've included Lupron injections to, to mask my testosterone, had 45 radiation treatments, and then six cycles of chemotherapy. And after my third chemo session in mid-June of 2023, I decided to try uh, Mayweather Boxing and Fitness to fight that extreme fatigue because I, I go way overboard <laughs> when I get involved in things. And, and this is when the, the tides turned for me, really. It was it was a great help. Uh, so in June, I weighed in at 298. I'd already lost a few pounds uh, in six months, but I dropped a total of around 40 pounds, uh, uh, gained about 10 pounds of muscle. I've dropped about 50 pounds of body fat um and actually I'm, I'm sorry i see that i made a mistake i've actually lost about 80 pounds in all i'm i'm right at two uh 260 hovering right right below 260 now so i've gained about 10 pounds of muscle dropped 50 pounds of body fat 11 pounds of that's visceral fat and i've reduced my body fat from 44 percent to around 31 percent and that's having hit around 400 boxing fitness classes at mayweather since i started my a1c has dropped from it was up in the, the mid sevens it's dropped down to 5.5. 5. 
and all my labs are perfect, except for the testosterone, which is still, um, because the Lupron is still non-detectable. Uh, as I started following your show, I have, I've, and having hit a plateau over the last few months, I knew I needed to start back with some strength training that I've done years ago and mix things up. So I started with a few workout programs in early July from Dr. Jim Stepani. And I really like the programming and the challenges. And, and as an aside from that, I found a passion and I won't go into much of that, but I, I went, obtained some personal training certifications and, and really trying to, to do a, a side hustle there, kind of dabbling in the personal trainer space because my passion and in fitness and what it did for me and in, in my particular story. But um, I recently purchased the Maps Bands uh, program after listening to you guys and wanted to try something different from traditional barbell and dumbbell training. That said, uh, despite anything I do, I feel like I'm fighting a never-ending battle because of my absolute lack of testosterone and use of GLP-1s, uh, which I'm on Majoro, the 12 and a half uh, dose weekly. I've dialed in my tr nutrition, and I'm currently set around uh, 2,020 calories a day with 185 grams each of protein and carbs and 60 grams of fat. I back my boxing workouts off to about three times a week and use it primarily as cardio and stress relief. And I've been uh, strength training on average for 45, four to five days a week, um, primarily doing full body workouts since July 1st. Since adding that strength training in July, that's where I really started seeing progress. And I know I need to stay that course, but my question to the Mind Pump team is, do you have any different recommendations on approaching things uh, due to my lack of testosterone and using Manjaro, I just took my last Lupron injection in June and should start to see testosterone returning, although I was already uh, in the low 100s prior to this whole journey with cancer. So I already had low T. Um, and I, I also plan on discussing with my doctor of getting off the Manjaro uh, here soon. I know you all started some different specific coaching on GLP-1 clients and have the MAPS uh, GLP-1 program available. I'm just interested in kind of that whole story. I know that's kind of quite a bit, but uh, given my circumstances, is there anything in particular that you guys might recommend I do differently? Um, yeah. Add to, take away, so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, just uh, get clarity. First of all, that was a, a ton of great information that helps us for sure. Uh, did you say you're doing four to five days of strength training a week and then you have three days of the boxing cardio class? Right. Yeah, too much, Brian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for your for your size, uh, the amount of calories you're eating, and low testosterone, and low testosterone, too uh, much, way too much, way, yeah. way too much. And you now, the good news is, I, I think we adjust a few things, and we're going to start building some muscle, and leaning out. I think that you uh, you absolutely uh, could tweak a few things and uh, start to see hopefully testosterone come up a little bit. How's your sleep? Tell me a little bit about what what your sleep looks like. Uh, the sleep is hit or miss. I, uh, you know, according to my athletic app, I use it on my my uh, Apple Watch. You know, probably four, a little over half the days a week, I I, have, I show a good recovery. Um, the other half, not so much. Um, I have trouble going to sleep at night. It kind of toss and turn. Uh, get up early for work, and, and of course, get the workouts in. So, um, on average, between six six to seven hours during the week, and then eight hours. You know, try to get eight hours in on the weekends, and and uh, get some recovery there. Were you an athlete so, when you were younger, Brad? No, no, I wasn't. I mean, you built a tremendous um, amount of muscle while uh, <laughs> low testosterone and overtraining. I think you got some some muscle building gifts. To be quite honest with you. I think if we yeah I, in uh, my college years, which was gosh 20, 30 years ago, um, I, I did quite a bit of, of weightlifting. I followed old Bill Phillips uh, Body for Life yeah, program. Oh, there you go. That's there you got go. me in, in some stuff, and and really built a lot of muscle back then. And then I got married, moved to Louisiana, all in the same same time frame. So Cajun food and and marriage, uh, <laughs> you know. Still married to the same woman. God love her. Uh, yeah. She's put up with me this many years, but. Uh, yeah, just a, a lot of poor choices along the way, growing and growing a family and such. So uh, I know what I did years ago. I know that I'm 30 years older now as well. So certainly a struggle. Yeah, I'd like to see you do MAPS Anabolic two days a week. You can keep your boxing and then you can just, you know, be, remain active on the other days. But I think that alone will put some muscle on you for sure. I think you'll see your strength go up. Mm -hmm. And then now that you're off the loop, Ron, how, how long do they expect your testosterone uh, to stay where it's at when you come off? Uh, they say within a so i've been getting the injections every six six months um 
and, and when I go back each six months, it's still zero, and then I get another shot. So it's at about a year. Um, okay. So, so I'm looking at you know early uh, second quarter, second quarter of next year, I should start seeing it come up some. So I'm I'm interested whether you know I don't know if the prostate cancer was contributing to the low T. I don't know if there's a connection there or not. Um, you know, with already having had low T at the time, yeah. um, you know, I'm interested how that plays out. Yeah, there and, seems and to I, be there seems to be a connection between low testosterone and and cancers, including prostate cancer. But once you have prostate cancer, then what they try to do is cut off the drivers of the growth of the cells. That's why they'll put you on a, a, a you know Lupron, which will block your testosterone, and sometimes they'll get even more aggressive. Um, but it, it could have contributed. So, you know, we'll wait and see what happens. If it doesn't come up after a year, year and a half, then you would talk to your, your, um, your, your, your cancer specialist and your hormone specialist. If testosterone replacement is even uh, an option, what they think about that. Uh, nonetheless, um, I, I feel very confident that if you strength trained appropriately, I mean, again, the reason why we, we we're, we're confident that you're probably overdoing it is the fact that you're eating so low calories at your size the fact that what you've been through and the fact that your testosterone is low, and that's you, just and a lot. You, and you got that yeah. much good, that good of results. Yeah, I feel so. like that's a lot of muscle memory. Now, it makes sense. You must have been pretty muscular in college. But yeah, I think if you did MAPS anabolic two days a week, what you'll probably see is some nice, consistent strength gains. And if that starts to happen, yeah. your A1C will get even better. Everything will get even better. Sounds like you're yeah. sleeping. That's the one thing that I too. saw. I'm sorry. I'm just Oh yeah, um, I was just gonna say when you're overtraining too, it's gonna impede on your sleep, so that might even improve as well. Right. For sure, we should yeah, see that. And I, and I had a suspicion that I was over overtraining. Um, you know, one of the things I did see most recently, uh, you know, with the at, when I added the strength training, that's when I, I I I really started to see the body fat drop off, and yeah. and I was trying to do full body workouts. I say four to, I'm doing the four to five days a week now because I've, done, I've started the bands program oh. which is three days of strength training and three days of more okay flexibility and, oh that works and, that's better yeah. but that, I, that's but okay anabolic is sal's recommendation for anabolic we're going to send you anabolic i also brad i'm going to have um are you on facebook ever do you ever get on facebook can i get you then yeah form? okay yeah. i'm gonna have I'll, doug I'll i'm gonna have doug put you in the forum uh, so okay. we, so we can keep an eye on you. And then I'd love for you just to check in with us about every 30 days about how anabolic is going for you. And we can make some tweaks. We didn't address nutrition very much, but, uh, do, are you pretty good about tracking your protein and hitting protein consistently? Yeah, I have been, I've been, uh, of okay. course, supplementing with, uh, protein supplements, but I try to get the majority, you know, through chicken and beef and, That's great. and uh, That's and, great. you know, through whole foods. Um, one question, if you don't mind me asking, you know, with the nutrition, you mentioned, you know, that low of a calorie count. So I, I had kind of, I calculated it. I went off one of the TDEE calculators yeah. online and looked at what I needed. What, what was my daily uh, maintenance calories? And I tried to cut that by 500, but I was trying to keep the protein at, at about a, well, I say a gram per pound, uh, but I was looking at more my target or I didn't, you know, target yeah, that's body right. weight that I wanted to get down to kind of 185. And then the fat, I was looking at about 0.5 grams of fat and then fill the balance of that with carbohydrates. Um, I mean, do you guys have a recommendation on at least calorie count wise where I, where I might want to be looking at? Well, I think, yeah, I would, I would bump you a couple hundred calories to start with to see how you feel. Or, with the new just, by, or just by him switching, Sal, mate, keeping it there first to see how he responds. Yeah. It's not, he's not at a, You're not at a horrible place calorie wise. It's not like you're eating 1500 and start like starving the body while also doing all this. It's really the, the, how low you are for all the stuff that you're doing. That's what's going okay. on, right? And then, and so okay. just by simply scaling back on the the training to just two days a week of MAPS anabolic um, should start to do a difference. But if it doesn't, then I'm with Sal. I'd probably bump you another 200 calories or so just to see how you respond to that. Right now, if you are a client of mine, really the focus and goal is let's go build some muscle. Let's focus on building muscle. Let's feed the body accordingly to where you feel good. You feel you have in good energy. You have good strength. And I don't really care right now about the scale. I want to see strength go up and you feel good on your lifts. That will tell me this. And what I'll probably see if you do that too, sleep will also probably improve. Yeah. So that's what I'm looking for right, right. now. Yep. And if you, if you, if you check in with us about every 30 days in the forum, just letting us know, Hey, 
this is what's going on. This is how I feel. This is what I've been doing consistently. What do you guys think? Uh, we'll tell you. Stay the course or, hey, maybe add this or take this away um, if you just keep up with us like that and let us know. But I definitely think MAPS Anabolic two days a week uh, with what you got going on is, is, a, is a much better recommendation. And what you're doing food-wise is probably okay. You could definitely get away with bumping the calories a little bit, though. Okay, great. We'll start you there. Right, okay. Hey, I appreciate the feedback, guys. All you right, it, man. All right, Brad. We'll see you inside the forum. All right, thank you. Take it easy, man. Now it makes sense. He's telling us how much muscle he gained yeah, that was while like, losing weight doing yeah. boxing. And so I'm muscle like, okay, memory. there's what, some genetics going What on a there. great testament, though, too, of what we talked about this not that long ago about the you know strength training being like this investment, totally. right? And the more you do it, the more you get this kind of compounding interest. Great example of someone even who went away from it for yeah. 30 years yeah. – and then came back and is not ideally training the correctly, right? Overdoing it on his body with all the things he's got going yeah. on. And yet his body still was building muscle and losing body fat. I mean, to me, that's just such a testament. It is obviously some genetics, but also, you know, the muscle fact, memory. Yeah, that. that muscle memory totally. from lifting as long as he did. Totally. Our next caller is Rebecca from Texas. Hi, Rebecca. What's happening? Hey. How you doing? Um. I thought I was going to be less nervous because this was my second time being on here, but I'm still the same amount of nervousness. So um, I just back. wanted to start off. <laughs> I just wanted to start off with thank you because the last time I was so nervous that I forgot to say thank you. I've literally been listening to you guys since I was like a freshman in high school. Wow. Um, you guys helped me wow. through like a massive eating disorder and I've now um, been a personal trainer. I got... Um, and NCI certified and did some nutrition coaching for some people. And then now I'm in chiropractic school and you guys gave me the connection to like reach out to um, Dr. Justin Brink, which was amazing. Wow, um, so I just yeah. want to thank you for all that. And you guys have helped me so much and just growth. It feels weird. Not even just listening to you guys. I went on vacation and I had to like binge the like podcast that I missed over the week. So just thank you for everything. That's awesome. Um, That's awesome, Rebecca. Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that being said, I am a very competitive person and I am in a competitive season in my life. Um, not only with school, but my school will do like powerlifting competitions and I've never done one personally. We had a um, competition like in September, I did that. I did okay. Um, but we have one coming up in October, like the beginning of October. So I really want to do well in that. But then I also had a goal this year of getting two pull-ups by the end of the year. And I had a friend who said that he has the goal of getting five pull-ups. So of course I was like, Hey, let's just make this a competition and see like who can get the most amount of pull-ups at the end of the year. So I want to win that for sure. Um, my issue is, is I am currently enrolled in like 29 credit hours. I'm also a tutor. I work outside of school just, just to make some extra cash. Um, and I'm also in a leadership position for like a club with like adjusting and stuff like that for chiropractic school. And so I got a lot on my plate. Um, and I'm just trying to figure out the best way of like, how to compete in this competition if it's the best thing to do for my health right now and what your guys guys's advice for that would be great question i mean there's nothing wrong with com competing but it can become bad for your health if you get super obsessed and beat yourself up over it but you know you, you've heard us talk about uh practicing pull-ups on a regular basis mm -hmm. you've heard us say that before okay um i that's the best way to get stronger at pull-ups is literally get a pull-up bar and just practice them throughout the day. How many pull-ups can you do now? Can you do one? I can do like one, sometimes two, but usually it's one right now. I would do one, you know, four times a day. Just do one, four times a day. Yeah, I, she br okay. didn't bring up her menstrual cycle. Are you still uh, struggling with your menstrual cycle? Are you are you having a period on a regular basis or no? So currently now, no. It's been about like two months since my last one. Okay, and it's PCOS, PCOS right? Yeah. Okay. And are you, yeah. have you tried working on nutrition to see if there's any effects from, I've had success with reducing carbohydrates and sugar with some individuals, not good for everybody, but for some people, have you tried anything like that? I haven't necessarily tried doing that because I tried tracking my calories for a bit just to see if like, just to see if I was eating enough and that was an issue. 
Um, but then I found myself like wanting to restrict because oh, of yeah. like just seeing the numbers. So then I would start just writing down the foods and the measurements and then track for like putting it in at the end of the day. And then I just got so busy that I like forgot to put everything in. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry then unless you're in that case, because if that sets you in the wrong direction, but yeah, as far as pull-ups, practice them throughout the day. Now I wouldn't even necessarily do just one. I would put a band around it. So it give me one assisted because you don't want it to be like a really hard practice. You want it to be like moderate and you just practice it throughout the day and watch how quickly you get stronger. The other thing I would do, this is a friend of yours. You said, yeah. How often do you see them? Um, well, we just got a new school schedule, so I don't necessarily know what classes he's in with me right now. Okay. All right. Uh, send him candy. Lots of candy. <laughs> yeah. The more weight he gains, the less pull-ups you'll be able to do. Yeah. It's just yeah. the other side of this, this competition. Awesome. Shake. It's really yeah, there's weight sabotage, and, and yeah. then there's working on yeah, yourself. Yeah. Those two things. Pour of. olive oil in all his food when he's yeah. not looking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that might mayonnaise. actually be a good idea. <laughs> extra, extra mayonnaise in his sandwiches. <laughs> you're really strong, by the way. I see, yeah, your, I see yeah. your, your lifts. They're really good. Yeah, my only, my only concern you, of, of all, the pull-up thing is that's kind of an easy thing, that, and actually probably a cool, fun thing for you to focus on trying to do that in addition to like crushing your power lifting in addition to everything you got going on maybe a little bit overdoing it um so i would just be mindful what are you talking about <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe mindful of that you know and so maybe like a one to two day a week protocol of maps anabolic with in conjunction with like your pull-up thing that you're doing every day would be more than enough yeah for your body is just something i would i would consider that's probably what it would look like if you were my client i'd say hey let's we could do this pull-up thing that's easy we just kind of practice that throughout the day every day with the band like sal saying and i'm not too worried about that because you're not pushing the intensity on that you're just practicing that movement and that's going to help that. And then strength training one to two days a week with MAPS Anabolic is plenty, especially someone as strong as you are, that's plenty to keep that strength up, maybe even get a little bit stronger by the time you meet there. You're more at risk of trying to do too much and actually getting less results because of that, because of where you're kind of at already. Yeah. Um, you trying to do three, four days a week or fall in a program like maps, power lift or something like that might be too much yeah. for what you have going on currently right now. But just so you know, the more you practice the exact lift that you want to get better at and the less you practice others mm -hmm. tends to be the better. So in other words, and I'm not saying this is by any means a Especially balanced, at moderate intensity. That's right. This is not a balanced routine, what I'm about to say. Right. But if I, let's say my life was on the line and I had 60 days to do as many pull-ups as possible, all I would do would be practice pull-ups and I wouldn't do any other lifts. I would do nothing else. I would just get stronger at pull-ups and I'd work on things like shoulder mobility and things to maintain my shoulder health. But that would be, and that's the fastest way to get strong at a specific lift within a short period of time. But of course, within that, other lifts will yeah. suffer. You're not going to develop balance and the other stuff. So it's really a consideration. Uh, and I've brought this up before and it just kind of gets breezed over, but like honestly, the, the the mechanics, the technique of you know the pull ups, like the the least amount of performance leak that you can provide in terms of you being able to brace to to the point where you're tight all the way from your fingertips to your toes. If you can master that, any body weight exercise that you try to perform from there, you're, you're going to have you know uh, at least a ten to fifteen percent strength increase. Yeah, it's a good point. The reason why I brought up the anabolic and not just practicing, you know, that her also goal was to, yeah, in October, be yep. strong for the the power lift. Otherwise, she's, I'd she's say got she, all the goals. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what what I hear Tackle from it you that I, the biggest challenge will be balancing all that and not yeah. overdoing it and going backwards in my results. And so the practicing pull ups one that's easy because we're not really pushing the body to failure or it's not a lot of volume in a day. Like, so that one's a pretty easy one to just follow what the guys are saying. Sal Sal's point and Justin's point, I think will get you to that goal. The trying to also do great at the powerlifting meet is going to be the, the, the and biggest school yeah, and, and school everything. and work <laughs> and everything you got going on. Uh, that would be the hardest. And in my opinion, it looks like a one to two day a week maps anabolic protocol is probably the, the max I'd probably want to, to stretch you. Okay. Yeah. I've been doing MAPS Anabolic for a while now. I think I've gone through like two or three cycles of that. Um, I did notice the end of my last trimester of school um, where like I would get, I almost would have, I've never ha had to be this person where to get myself to go to the gym or push myself to go to the gym, but there would be times where I like 
started hating going to the gym and like having to push myself through. Um, I'm not, I usually go to bed at like a decent time. Um, I'm really like strict about that. My friends actually call me a grandma because I go to bed so early, but like I, um, I do have issues or I notice having more issues as far as like waking up earlier and not going back to sleep. So I just didn't know um, if MAPS anabolic was too much or not. Uh, well, how many days a week were you doing it? Probably. I was doing it like two to three. Yeah. I, yeah. I think one to two. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Or, or MAPS 15. You can do that too. Sounds good. Thanks. That's, that's actually a good point too. Do you have MAPS 15, Rebecca? Okay. Yeah. Do you have MAPS 15? No. Now, would that be, would, would you prefer to do like 20 minutes a day instead of like one workout a week? That's an hour. Honestly, that might actually work better with my schedule. So then I don't feel like I'm sitting all day with school and not okay. having any uh, movement yeah. and then yeah. needing to plug in like an like, hour. I like, I like that too. We'll send it to you. Yeah. Mass 15 would be great for you. It'll fit well. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you guys. You got it. You maniac. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Let us know. How, how <laughs> <it goes. laughs> well, and I think one thing that I need to tell you is that I also started a podcast and you guys were like helping me within that. So I appreciate the encouragement of like wanting to start my own. Wow. Um, hey, awesome. So yeah. Give it a shout out. <laughs> what's gotta, what's we, the name Rebecca, of your show? We got to get you in the, the training course. We got to get you in there. That'll help with everything going on yeah. with the chiropractic stuff too. So. What's the name of your show? Oh, I would love that. Becca Babbles. Oh, cool. <laughs> that sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right on. Thank you guys. Right on, Thank Rebecca. You. Sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that you know, I had a client once who she went on a long, uh, it was like a thirty day vacation, and didn't have access to a gym. And she said all I did was practice pull ups and practice push ups every day. She asked me, "What can I do?" I said, oh, "I just you know, you want to get better at these two lifts? Try that." Sure. She doubled them at the end of thirty days. <laughs> doubled the reps that she could do. Wow. You know, yeah. I know our uh, our enrollment is closed right now for the course, but I do want to say that you because I've had this question. Uh, several times like if you're a, a chiropractor massage therapist acupuncture physical therapist. physical therapist anybody in the health uh health and fitness space where you are a entrepreneur that course is super for totally. you it's not this uh yeah. train personal trainer specific to where we because that's what we don't do we don't go into uh, heavy nutritional advice heavy uh programming advice no, it's teach more you about how to coach how to train and uh, the business and how to build your yeah business. how to scale your business uh online and in person and so if you're anything in the field uh highly recommend and so at the bare minimum start following all the free content that we have out there uh which is the personal training growth hacks on facebook and then also the uh personal trainer mind pump trainer on ig so make sure you take so, advantage of what's that the stuff. most amount of pull-ups you guys ever did do you guys know what that is for you 20 20 that's yeah, pretty good like mm -hmm. 15 nice i hate pull-ups dude you got well you're, <laughs> yeah. you're pulling a lot of junk in the trunk yeah, a lot, there, so a lot of heavy on. cakes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. got a big caboose awesome all right i know you liked that episode if you did check this one out 30 percent body fat for men this is way too high this is actually a bit high for women as well so in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right? Of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body.